Hello, I'm Jenna, and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. For this week's challenge, we are looking at our favorite products. So this is our year in review. And if you would like to join the creative fun, simply hashtag your makes with your favorite product released this year with the hashtag the funky junkie. So what are my favorite products? It was hard to choose, but there are three products that I absolutely couldn't live without now that they are in the world of distress. The three products that I'm going to be featuring today are the Media Grip, Distress Watercolor Pencils, and Distress Foundry Wax. If you'd like to see which supplies I'm going to be using for my project today, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the Crafty Corner. Today, we're talking about our favorite products from 2020. And in my case, I'm talking about my favorite products from Tim Holtz. Now, it's almost impossible to only feature one product. But let's start with this one, Media Grip. This has been an absolute game changer for creating. This is a wonderful substance. It sticks to the media mat, and it forms this fantastic grip. If you want something to stay put, this is what you use to keep it to stay put. Great for sticking down ink pads. Also good for putting down papers that you don't want to move. And today, we're going to be using the Media Grip to keep some of our paper dolls in place while we use another one of my favorite products to give these some color. So once these are down, these do not move. So the other favorite product that I wanted to feature today would be the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Pencils. I absolutely love these. These have been fantastic for coloring paper dolls and for other distress techniques. So we're going to start by coloring these paper dolls and using some of my favorite distress watercolor pencils. So the nice thing about the Distress Watercolor Pencils, once you've worn down the tip just a little bit, you can sharpen these. But we don't get rid of the shavings, we collect the shavings, and then put them into a convenient palette. This is the Tim Holtz Alcohol Ink Palette, but this works just well for collecting the shavings of the Distress Watercolor Pencils. So I'm going to be pulling from the pencil shaving palette to give these paper dolls some color. Later we'll come back and work with another technique that directly focuses on the pencils themselves. Okay, so let's set those aside for a moment and let's open up the palette. Now with the palette, the only other thing we need is a water brush. And for the water brush, I'm using one of the Ranger Fine Detailer water brushes. And all we need to do is dab up just a little bit of the colorant and we will get beautiful results. Let's go ahead and bring the camera just a little bit closer while we add some color. So I've got just a little bit of blue on here. I believe this is some of the speckled egg. Let's go ahead and add that to the bow. Perfect. As you can see, it's highly pigmented, so it doesn't take too much before we can see the added color on the paper doll. Yet another one of those wonderful traits about this product. And let's go in with a little bit of vintage photo for the dog. Just dab that on. And as you can see, we're only using a very little bit of the pigment and just lightly brushing it on with the brush. And that gives us pretty good results right away. Okay, happy with that. Next, let's add a little bit of color to the jacket. Let's see, I think I want to go in with maybe a little bit of prize ribbon. And just add that on the stripes. Yeah, I love it, a little bit goes a long way in this case. Okay, pretty happy with that. Now I just want to add a little bit more color here. I think that it's got a look of a fur. So let's add in a little bit of frayed burlap. 
Yep, kind of want just like a little bit of a creamy color on this. Perfect. And then we'll give the girl's face a little bit of color too. And her hands. So with the Distress Watercolors, it is super easy to add color and pigmentation to these wonderful vintage pieces. Okay, and for the hair, I want to add a little bit of mustard seed. There. Just like that. Oh, it's just a little bit too bright, but we can take some of that color off. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, and I would call this one done. So I'm going to color in the other paper dolls that we have here, but we'll put that on fast forward. Okay, and here are our finished results for coloring paper dolls using Distress Watercolor pencils. I absolutely love the vibrant colors that we can get with these, and there's even a certain amount of subtlety as well to these. Okay, so let's move on to my next favorite technique with the Distress Watercolor pencils. So my next favorite technique would involve Distress Watercolor stamping. Now, for the stamp set that I'm going to be pulling in, we will be using Festive Collage. This is definitely one of my favorite stamp sets from this year's Christmas Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous release. So let's go ahead and pull in some paper and we're going to be making a background with these stamps and the Distress Watercolors. I'm going to start off with the holly and we're just going to make a bit of a collage in our backdrop. So let's go ahead and get that mounted on a stamp block. And we're going to just add some water to the media grip mat. And for this technique, we take a Distress watercolor pencil and we dip it directly into the water. So just taking the point, dipping that in, and then we color directly onto the stamp and that will transfer pigment right where we want it. And since these can be sharpened, it makes it so much easier to fill in the detail in the exact spaces where we want the color. And we can even layer up the colors to get different effects. This is one of the techniques that I learned during the launch of these Distress Watercolor Pencils from Tim Holtz during a Saturday Live. Definitely a fun technique and a great way to create an easy background. Next, we're going to go in with some Rustic Wilderness. And I'm just going to color the leaves. And then I think for an accent color, I'm going to be going in with some Twisted Citron as well. And I'll just keep scribbling over the stamp until I've got some good coverage. All right, let's go in with a bit of the Twisted Citron. Let's see, there it is. And again, we'll just dip the point of this and scribble that down. Okay, so I'm just going to keep coloring this in. So let's go ahead and put the rest of this on fast forward while we finish up our coloring.
Okay, now that we've finished coloring our stamp with the Distress Watercolor Pencils, it is time to stamp our image. But before we stamp, I'm going to be taking the Distress Sprayer and we're going to be quickly misting our stamp. That way we're going to get a watercolor effect when we stamp this down. So just two quick spritzes and then we'll just take this and stamp it down. Apply good firm pressure and let's see what we got. And that looks really good. So the nice thing about this, we've still got plenty of pigment on it so I can get a second generation and then potentially even a third. So I'll give this a quick mist again and we'll then get our second stamping. All right, I'm gonna just turn that upside down so that we're getting a different angle. And stamp. Let's lift that off. Oh, that came out even better. Cool. Quick spritz and let's see about down here. Get one going across in this direction. All right. Oh, that came out wonderfully. Ooh, really like this. Okay, so the one thing I am going to do is add a very light misting over the top. I'd like to get a little bit more of a watercolor effect, and then we will dry this off with the Ranger Heat Tool. Okay, and that is moving the pigment around just enough, so we'll be back in just a moment after I've dried this off. All right, let's take a closer look. Oh, that came out really well. I am very happy with the way this looks. So the last thing that I want to do to this background will be to add a touch of Vintage Photo Distress Ink. So we'll just take our ink pad, ink up some dome foam, and do a light blending over the top. So I'm gonna start at the edges, and with the media grip, that gives us a nice smooth transition. We'll just work our way around and then on to the center of the card. Because I definitely want my edges to be just a little bit darker. But the media grip gives us a nice transition and it makes blending so much nicer. Okay, quickly blending out the middle. That's great. Mm. Now I want to add a few little water droplets and then I will be calling this background done. So, oh, slow squeeze with the spritzer. That looks good. Okay, and I'll just give this a quick dry with the heat tool and we'll have a completed background. And here is our completed card base. Oh my word, I absolutely love how the little droplets came out. That looks so good with the Distress watercoloring and the watercolor pencils. Okay, time to put this card together. Now I have a sentiment that I used in a previous project. You might remember this little sign from Twig and Stump that we featured a little bit a while ago, but this seems like a great sentiment to use here and that can go right in the center. I've already got some sticky back adhesive on here with a couple of foam squares. We'll go ahead and peel that off and then we will add a couple other elements. For the other elements that I'm going to be pulling in, we're going to be using one of the altered paper dolls that we did earlier. And I also grabbed a small piece of foliage from this year's ideology. So we'll go ahead, stick that down. Oh, that really works well. And I'm liking that little splash of metallic. Okay, now we're gonna take our paper doll. She's gonna go over here and we're going to put that little clump of holly right here. Oh, but before we do that, I want to add a border. Let's see. So for the border, I'm going to use some of this older ideology label tape. Let's go ahead, we'll take that, we'll stick that down here, run that down, and then we'll take the scissors and snip off the extra. All right. Oh, perfect. I even have a natural break between words. Even better. All right, mini snips. Good turn. And we will continue our border with the label tape. 
don't know. I really like the black label tape. It adds a nice solid contrast to our otherwise kind of watery loose colors. Okay, another snip. I'll cut off some of that extra backing and we'll just keep turning and this way. I think this time I'm going to kind of roughly measure that out right there. Ooh, natural break. Perfect. Peel the backing, stick it down. All right. So this card is coming together pretty quickly, which is really nice. Okay, let's stick that right here. That looks good. And then we just have one more piece to put down this way. So that shouldn't take too long. We'll just peel that off. And I am going to overlap just a little bit since some of my words got a little bit wonky. Okay, good. Oh, I'm going to have to splice wonder off, but not horrible. Okay. Last up for this card, we are going to add some collage medium and put down our two elements. So I just want a little bit of glue over here. We'll just kind of squiggle that on and we will place this right about, hmm, I think right here. That will work and I might have to slip a little foam square under the base of that. That won't be too difficult and then just a little bit of collage medium on our little holly clump and that goes over here. So that was pretty easy. We created a background using the Distress watercolor pencils and using the technique of watercolor stamping to get that beautiful background effect. The last thing I'm going to do is slip a piece of foam tape right under the bottom part of the paper doll so that will pop up nicely and not drag on the card. Okay, so this is card number one completed. Next, we are going to be focusing on the Distress Foundry Wax. So let's go ahead and get our materials out for our second card. Now we're going to take a look at my third favorite product from this year, 2020 by Tim Holtz. I absolutely love Foundry Wax. This stuff is positively magical. Now let's go ahead and use this on our next card. So for the next card, I decided that I wanted to pull in the 3D embossing folder tree rings. This has amazing texture. The texture in here is absolutely fantastic. And when you run the paper through the vagabond, mm, look at all that wonderful texture. But we can do more with this fantastic texture. To highlight the texture, I'm going to be using some of the Foundry Wax statue. So we're going to go ahead, give this a good shake. And I'm going to drop a bit down onto the media mat. We'll just add a bit right here. And I'm going to quickly dry brush this on. And this is going to help highlight all of that wonderful texture on here and the rings. So just with a paintbrush, I'm going to dab that on. And then we're going to just quickly brush this onto the paper. Just I'm trying to be very light-handed. I just want to brush this over here and as it goes down it's going to catch the raised bumpity bits on the folder. Just like that and it's drying really fast which is good. Okay, it looks like I need just a little bit more. So we'll just add a few more drops over here. Perfect. Put the lid back on that and continue to dry brush. Okay. That should look pretty good. Okay, so I'll just quickly wipe up that little extra bit here. And now I'm going to emboss this with the heat gun. And I'll put that part on fast forward so we can watch the magic as the foundry wax changes on the paper. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, look at that shine. That looks so cool. 
I love how the Distress Foundry Wax just lifts up the texture and gives this even more dimension. But we're going to take this a step further and grunge this up a little bit. So I'm going to be pulling in some Distress Black Soot Crayon. And we're going to scribble this down and I'm going to be trying to highlight a little bit more of this fantastic texture. So we're just going to scribble this on. Just like that. And then I'm going to just smudge it in. If we need to go back for a bit more, easy enough. And now we're bringing out even more of that texture and we still have the amazing shine of the foundry wax. So I'm just smudging my fingers. I didn't even need to grab any extra water. Just scribble the crayon down and then smudge it out. All right, let's take a closer look. Oh, and you can still see all of that wonderful foundry wax. But the distress crayon just adds a little bit more highlight to what we were trying to do for the texture. So cool. Okay, this is our background. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside for the moment. And I'm going to pull in our piece that we're going to be working on for the focal point. So I have die cut an oval and on it we're going to create our background and then we'll drop in a focal point. So very easy for the backdrop. I'm going to be pulling in stamp set CMS 241 ledger script. This is one of my all-time favorite stamp sets and I think we're going to use this one down here. We'll need to do two little stampings but not a big deal. Just take that, peel it off. I've got an acrylic block over here. Now I want the stamping to be really watery. So we're going to be doing watercolor stamping using the Distress watercolor pencils. So right here, I'm going to make a little drip so that I can put the watercolor pencil directly into that. And we're going to be using the color Vintage Photo. I'm just gonna dip the crayon in the water and we're just going to scribble that directly onto the stamp. So it won't take much effort, we just want the crayon to be a bit damp and then we can just transfer that pigment right onto the stamped image. And the thing is, once we stamp this out, we'll be able to reactivate the pigment from the Distress Crayon and get a really great watercolor look. Now, I particularly like how pigmented the Distress watercolor pencils are, and that's going to help with that watery look. I'm kind of hoping that we're gonna get like a faded script look, like a really old document that has had a bit of water damage to it. That is kind of the look that I'm going for with this. I'm just going to keep scribbling this down and just get good coverage all over the stamp. All right, just a little bit more here and there. That should be pretty good. I doubt I'll have to reapply the Distress Watercolor Pencil because I should be able to get a second generation stamp just like we did earlier when we were playing with Festive Collage. There's so much pigment second generation stamping is pretty easy. All right, just a little bit more over here. Okay, good. So just quickly wipe up that little smudge right here. Now, you can see that this is still fairly damp, but since I'm going for a more watery look, I am going to quickly spritz this. There, just like that. We'll get our paper and stamp it down. And I'll definitely need to do that second generation stamping at the bottom. Oh yeah, that turned out really well. I like it. Okay, now I do want a bit more of a watery look, so I'm going to spritz this again and then we're gonna quickly dry it off with the Ranger Heat Tool. So let's go ahead, we're going to spritz it out with a little bit of water. Hmm, not bad, but I want a little bit more. There we go, now I've got a bleed going, perfect. All right, back in a second after we dry right, this And off. the effect on that is just what I was going for. We've got this really weathered writing look on here, but it's still a little bit too 
white and pristine. So we're going to ink that up with a bit of Distress Ink Vintage Photo. So a little bit of dome foam, a little bit of ink, and we'll just quickly add a little blend to this. Nothing too heavy, just just enough to make sure that we've covered up all those white bits. Ooh, that's going on a little bit thicker than I wanted. Okay, well, not a big deal. Let's try adding some drip drops. There, slow drips. Okay, that looks better. And then I will dry it off with the heat tool. See how that works. Okay, back in just a moment. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. Now the next thing I want to do is add a border around the edge. And to do that, we're going to be going in with some foundry wax. In this case, I'm going to be using some sterling. Now a small note about sterling. This one has the thickest viscosity and no matter how much you shake this one, you typically do not hear the mixing ball, but that is okay. I'm gonna squeeze some out onto here and the consistency I've been getting lately, this might just be the temperature, it's been very thick. It has almost a toothpaste-like consistency, but this stuff still works. So let's put some down and we'll brush that on. But as you can see, very toothpaste-like. That's all right. We will make it work. Okay, grabbing the brush. Oh, it's a little crumbly. Well, Let's just do our best and get that on here. Okay. And a little bit over here. Ooh, that is, that's drying really fast today. Interesting. Well, you know what? Let's throw caution to the wind, go in with our fingers and just scrape it on there. I want that sterling on here, so never mind if we get dirty fingers. Okay. Well, Another thing that I've noticed in general is that sterling has the quickest drying time. And that means that once you get it spread, you gotta move. Because it goes from paste to dust very quickly. It's pretty interesting, but every foundry wax seems to have its own little temperament. That's okay. That's the fun of playing around with different mediums. You get to know them and get to know the quirks. And still achieve gorgeous results. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and heat this up. Okay, and here is the foundry wax all melted. That looks really cool. Okay, so next we're going to be pulling in stamp set CMS 353 Holiday Greetings. And the stamp I've chosen from that set is this one. This one is very cool. I like the carriage and horse with the greetings underneath it. So this is perfect for any time during the winter season. So well, let's go ahead, flip this over, and I'm going to be coloring in the back of this. The colors that I have selected to use are Rustic Wilderness, Black Soot, Barn Door, Mustard Seed, prize ribbon and vintage photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this part on fast forward while we do a bit of coloring. Okay, let's take a look at our colored image. So that is looking pretty good. I'm hoping that the black is going to show up really well against our backdrop. So I'm just gonna add just a touch more to make sure that we have a very clear stamped image. Okay, so let's go ahead and stamp this down. I am gonna give this a quick mist though before we finish stamping. Okay, that should be good. Let's go ahead, we've got our backdrop and let's stamp this out. Okay, good. Now we'll just apply good firm pressure, make sure that we're transferring that image. All right, let's see how it did. Ooh, not bad. Some of the details a little bit smudged, but you know what? I like this. That is neat. 
Okay, I'm just going to give that a quick dry with the heat tool and then we will add this to our backdrop. Okay, so we're just going to turn this sideways and add our image. To add the image there, I am going to be pulling in some foam squares. So I've got some of these large foam squares. We're going to add a few to the back of our oval and then attach it to our card. As you can see, we did have a slight mishap on the back side, but you know what? That's okay. Mistakes are what help us learn new things. And I learned that you cannot use distressed watercolor pencil in brown and expect it to show up on a brown background. But you know what? That's okay. I'm pretty darn happy with the way this turned out. All right. So let's go ahead and add our image. Okay, and we will just place this down right here. Mm. That looks great. I am loving the rustic look that the tree rings give to this whole thing. Now for finishing touches, I decided that I wanted to add a few droplets at the corners. I absolutely love these metallic droplets from this year's ideology, and they are the perfect finishing touch to this card. So we're going to grab some of the silver droplets and add one to each corner. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little dot of collage medium and then we will stick our droplets down. And just keep turning that card. There. I am loving the combination of how rustic this looks along with those metallic accents. Definitely a fun combination. Okay, and silver, that's one. Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna put a bunch of those right here. Much easier to pick up. Two, three. And we just need one more, four. And there we go. That is our completed second card using my top three favorites from this year's 2022 Tim Holtz releases. To recap, I absolutely fell in love with Foundry Wax and the magic that it goes through as it transforms from a matte paste into something shiny that looks like molten metal. Number two was the Distress watercolor pencils. I love how versatile these are and there are so many wonderful techniques. And of course we get the same wonderful Distress colors with these. And my number one pick for 2022 is the Tim Holtz Media Grip. An absolute game changer in terms of tools and has made my stamping and collaging and many techniques in between so much easier. So let's go ahead and pull back our second card. And these are my two cards for our favorite Tim Holtz products from 2020, a year in review. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Crafty Corner. I hope that you will check out more fun over at the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue blog. My DT teammates have created some fantastic projects and we have more favorite products to share from this year. And don't forget you too can join the creative fun. Use your favorite product released this year and tell us about it. Don't forget to use the hashtag the funky junkie. Links are down in the description box as well as directions if you would like to join the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue Challenge. And until next time, happy crafting.